Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you have landed on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take pre-loved, thrifted, secondhand finds and if they're in need of a little bit of loving, I love to share the process with you all of how I make over these items and give them new life. We're gonna start off with this little box and there's a surprise inside. There are multiple of these boxes. Yes, there's a little trio of these stacking boxes. And I, I really, I don't know the company. I don't know <laughs> what would have came with them. I just absolutely love little trio of stacking boxes. We're gonna start off with taking a little, there's some little tags on the bottom. We definitely don't wanna paint over any type of tag. So luckily they're pretty simple to remove. And there's some kind of a gunk on the top of this one, but we'll deal with that in a second. But scraping whatever, you know, was on there off. Now the wording feels pretty flat to me, but I still wanna scuff that surface, make sure that it is nice and flat want to see how much of the red is coming off because red will definitely affect your paint color because red a lot of times likes to bleed through. So I'm just taking some 220 sandpaper and this actually has a grain to it so I'm working with the grain trying to not make mar you know like terrible marks by going against the grain but and then also taking a moment to sand where the tag was that it really helps that you don't notice it. So the first one you didn't see the paint coming off as much as the second one. So I know that I'll need to do something to prevent that paint from bleeding through. Now, after a quick dusting, a little bit of cleaning, just to get that paint residue and sanding dust taken off of these. I'm gonna go ahead and use a product called shellac. If you not, have not used shellac before, it is an opacity filler. It'll seal that red paint in and prevent it from bleeding through, kind of like a type of primer, but a little bit easier because you just spray it on. It can't hurt since I am changing the porosity of the top of these little boxes. I'm going to go ahead and seal in the rest of the box just so that it, the paint takes evenly on both pieces. So I'm going to paint these up using some Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in the color Flower Sack. I'm super excited to try out some labeling on these that I ran across over the Christmas season. I actually have an inspiration of what I would kind of like like them to look like, you know. Um, so I thought this is a perfect little trio to try this out on. So Sweet, Sweet Pickens Milk Paint is equal parts water to equal parts powdery paint. And then you stir it for two minutes and then you sit it off to the side and let it thicken. For those who are new to our channel and had no idea that we actually have a second channel that we just recently started about home decor, the behind the scenes of a YouTuber, auctions, thrift hauls, anything like that. But my motivation is going to come from this campfire tin. I ran across a downloadable purchase image of the campfire marshmallow tin and I was super excited to find something that I could actually use it on to try to create a reproduction. No, though these are not tin, but it's just, I don't know about you all, but I love to try new things. So this is going to be my base color. I'm going to kind of build up some other colors to make it look like an old rusty campfire tin. So that's where the flower sack is coming in. This is just a nice white color. Milk paint just goes on nice and smooth. And the fun thing about milk paint is it will can, it's unpredictable, crack, crazing, chip. So I'm hoping for some crackage on this just to give it that old timey look.
Now that was not a one coat coverage kind of application by any means, especially with wood where it is going to soak it in even with the shellac. So I'm going to go ahead and put on the second coat. I don't need it to be like this perfect paint job, but it does need to be covered more than that. So I was searching on Etsy, probably looking up like some comps or something I had purchased and then I ran across this and I'm like what is this I'm like oh it's a digital download that you can purchase and I love like it has that little bit of a rounded effect so what you do is you go to Etsy I'll link it down in the description if you're interested and then what I do is then it's saved into my files and then I just it opens up because I have a Mac computer onto my pages and then I can copy and then I can paste it into my Excel program and then size it to each individual item that I want it want to put it on. How fun is that? And though these are not tin, I know that, but it's the fun of testing it out and seeing. I'm like, oh, I already have these. I would love to test it out now. I know that I could just like put Mod Podge on the back and I could just leave it as is but we're going to have some fun with these little things so yes so first of all to attach the labeling to it I just printed it off on regular copy paper and I have to remember that I have a lid going on here so I'll have to push it down towards the bottoms and you know how that goes your first one is always your trial and I'm like I probably should put the lid on this <laughs> and um Make sure that I have it so you can see all that wording. All I did was measure the front of each one of these little boxes to see what size I needed to size it to, lengthwise and heightwise both ways. When I get smart on my second one, I'm like, okay, remember to put the lid on first. I do have that nice little contraption that comes from Tracy's underneath a towel here. Um, that helps round objects not roll. I'll try to remember to link it if if I don't remind me all and I will um, link it down in the description. It's a, just nice but it's hiding underneath that towel. So look at that I was able to fit these perfectly by measuring um, and you could just leave them as is but you know that's just not probably how I'm going to do <laughs> do it because I like to have fun with patinas. Oh yeah you know I'm bringing out the patinas on these. Now this one ended up getting a little bit on the large size and I'm like, you know, I'm not going to go ahead and reprint. I'll just kind of like move things around until I got most of the wording on there. You know, you kind of just work with what you have. Yes, I could go, but I have to go all the way back into my house because my studio workshop doesn't have a printer and computer in it and it's snowing out. So no, I don't want to walk back in the house and I'm just going to make do with what I have. So what I'll do is I'll just like make sure I have most of the wording and then I'll just trim off the excess paper. Trimming off that paper did not change anything on the labeling at all and I wanted to blend the labeling and I don't want you to see the labeling. I, I want you to see the labeling, but I don't want you to see the edges of the labeling. Let me rephrase that. So we're going to use some of the Dixie Bell's patina. So I'm going to start off with some of the iron, and I have no idea if this is going to work or not. I want to make it look like one of those salvaged, vintage, rusty, crusty campfire marshmallow tins. So I'm just going to play along. I, I don't I really don't know how this is going to work out and sometimes you just jump into it head first and see what happens. So I'm using a stencil brush from the Dollar Tree store that has been well loved. It is flared out as perfect for applying the splotches of the iron paint which then appear to be like rust once you add the other patina to it. But right now I'm just kind of like hitting here and there. I know that that flower sack color, the white color is not going to be that color by the end of this process, but that was just the initial base color. You know that rust is sporadic. It just hits and miss and has no rhyme and reason always or any of the time. So that's kind of my theory of just pouncing that little dab of iron paint on there. So to get that iron paint to look like rust, I need to use the 
Dixie Bell's activator in the green. Now this is the part that I was kind of like, you know, I'm a little bit on the unsure side only because I didn't seal my milk paint in and I didn't seal the label in. So let's see what happens. Well, I did get some rustiness. It is changing the iron paint, but not as much. I think the paint soaked into the two paints soaked in together and then just dried. So they weren't really like activating quite as much as I was hoping it to, but that's okay. You know, I have other arsenal of rusty, crusty products in my, my stash. So I have this gilding wax that has the rust patina. So I'll just gently start to work with it. Um, just ever so slightly try not to, you know, I want that, those darker spots to be there. I, and like, for some reason, like, I don't know, the green and the white paint made blue. So some of my white looks a little bit blue. <laughs> so this is actually helping to tone it down. So sometimes you just, you know, I've always said here on the channel, you just keep playing with something till you love it. What works for one person may not work for the other person. And when you're testing out and trying something new, you have to problem solve along the way. And then I'm just going to try one more thing. I did the bottom also and then took the lid off and kind of blended that up. And I really do like it. I, the only thing I would go back in time is I would probably just take some clear coat and seal the whole thing in before doing the rust patina. But I'm going to go ahead and blend everything together. I want to, there's still a little bit of blue tint that I don't want to see. So I'm just taking some of the Fusions Liming Wax, which is going to then kind of make the tin look more creamish. So I'm kind of waxing on and then wiping off because it'll move some of that dry rust powder a little bit that hasn't really set up. But other than that, I really had a lot of fun doing these and I, I really like them. So after letting my liming wax dry a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and seal these in using some weather defense spray to give them that nice glossy look like that you would have on a tin. Now I have this set of three stacking boxes, though they're they're pretty darn cute, <laughs> cute already. Um, I just want to update a little bit, make it more of a neutral, and boy, do they have the tags tags on them. And then one is actually broken, um, but yeah, sometimes and they're just paper; they're not anything terribly like fancy. And apparently, as I'm taking the stickers off, I'm like, oh, <laughs> they came from Art Man, which which to us was like a, a furniture store that has now gone out of business. So just like before, I need to sand these a little bit, not only where I took the tag off to make sure that there's no marking or residue left behind, but also to like tone down and that you don't see any of the wording, but then when I was sanding it, I'm like, oh, they really emphasize the number. And though I'm not, I'm going to go ahead and take away the wording. I'm like, you know what? I may not completely flatten out the numbers. I think that would be a nice little feature, just highlighting the numbers. Though I am going to wash these off a little bit with just some, some Dawn dish soap, some hot water and really like ring so I don't have a sopping wet rag getting this paper wet. And then as I noticed when I was washing them off, for some reason, the second stacking box has this little raised detail, which is the same material that they raised the numbers with. 
but I don't want to leave that on the top. It's the second one. If you have them all stacked on top of each other, you're not even going to see it. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and scrape that off, hopefully not damaging the cardboard too much. Now it's the biggest box that has the problem that that bottom is broken. And so like, you know, do you just try to glue it with it on? Do you just, you know, cause you can see it's pushed in and I'm not, it doesn't need to be perfect. You know, it's that perfectly imperfect. It's the character, you know that it's an older piece. You can tell that it's aged. So all I did was push it back in there. I brought the paper that was on the inside onto the outside because that's kind of how the other bottom boxes look like and then I'm just carefully with kind of a hot mess of trying to glue that small piece of paper down on top of it I'm just using some CA glue which is a little quick dry um, and then like my metal <laughs> my metal weeding tools so hopefully my fingers don't get stuck So after I get it all glued on, I just use some wood putty, the putty that turn, that's pink that turns brown, and then I'm just trying to smooth it out with a little bit of water, trying to make it look like that's just the way it has always aged. And then after it dries, I can go ahead and seal it in using some shellac that will even out the prosty and make it not be so noticeable. So now for these stacking boxes, I'm going to go ahead and kind of use an off-whitish color. So I'm using Fusion's Cashmere. I don't need to shellac really the rest of the boxes because Fusion has primer, paint, and top coat all in one. And I absolutely love these brushes. These brushes are also available at the Painted Heirloom. It just, they hold such a little bit of paint and they're so, like, the brushes are so soft. They just make it so easy to paint an object. And the hand size for me is wonderful. Like before, when I'm using a lighter color, one coat is not enough, but that's okay. It's nicer to put on thin coats instead of having a sloppy, drippy mess, which these brushes make it really hard to do that because they just hold like the right, for me, they hold the right amount of paint anyway. And I love the strokes. So yeah, so second coat it is for these little boxes. I don't think I have a steady enough hand to like try to take a small paintbrush and paint right on top of that the the raised embossed numbers and it, they're not like a completely straight anyway they there's some kind of a puffy paint maybe that was put on them so all I'm going to do is just take some aging wax and see if I can just pop and bring out those numbers I wanted to add a little bit of age to the box anyway but I'm not that streaky of a of an aging process. So we'll just wax on, wax off, and then I waxed it right off the numbers, but that's okay. I can go I can go back over with them after I get the box all aged. I just love that little bit of age that this aging wax gives an item. Now I'm gonna use some of the Finnabar patina just with my finger, very ever so slightly. The wax, the aging wax just kept coming off on it. It just wasn't enough color per se 
to catch the numbers, but that's okay. It's nice to have different little hues. So that's all I want to do. I just want to pop those numbers out. And to tie that color in with the rest of the box, I'm just going to hit the edges. Yep, I'm just doing this with my finger, just kind of blending, blending it up. It blends because the aging wax is still wet. So yeah, just something to pop out those edges and give it a little bit more detail. It is funny sometimes how you run across items and they end up being little trios and <laughs> little do you know. But look at these cute little boxes. Though, unfortunately, they kind of look worse for wear, to me anyway, than the way that they are. But I think that I can make them look a little bit more high-end. I think it has like a cracking compound over the top of them and they're super shiny. And we've got some brokenness here and there. So I thought it would just be fun to make over who doesn't love little extra storage cubbies. And I don't mind the hinges by any means. They're all there. The screws are all there. They kind of have a rusty patina. So that is a good thing. <laughs> Having all of your hardware there and be working order like hinges is huge. You know how it goes in life we all have our own little pet peeves and mine is always painting over tags i always try to move any kind of price tags chi made in china tags you know but if it's like a maker's mark or something that has to do with the piece i'm probably not painting over it anyway or if i am like when i do pieces of furniture i will tape it off and i'll make it part of the design the labeling on these pieces I thought was painted on, but it's not. It's all, it's all papered. Okay, so you're just, I'm just going to have to take my time and go ahead and start to scrape that first layer off. I know I could sand it, but sometimes it just eats up your sandpaper. So I'm going to go ahead and then it, like there was a crackle finished coating on here. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to take my scraping tool and get the the first layer off and then I can go back in with my power sander and get the rest of the paper off. One thing I am doing when I'm sanding these boxes is I'm rounding off those really short corners. This will make it look a little bit more aged and more worn not to have those very sharp corners. And I do need to fix this little piece. I did not now this is the piece I didn't know was broken. Um, <laughs> a little bit of tight bond glue and a brad nail to put this back into its place.
this was the area I knew that was loose and needed to be tightened back up was the top of this. So I'm going to add a little bit of tight bond glue, just kind of sticking it in there and then Brad nail it down. The tight bond will help it so that it doesn't come loose again, like the nails don't come loose. It'll secure it a little bit better. Now to me, these personally would be decorative pieces because there's not a tight seal. But when I started to clean on the inside, I'm like, yeah, somebody stuck flour and sugar and all that free flow. I, because of not being a tight seal, I, I would think I wouldn't want bugs to get into them. So I would like think closed packages maybe, but hey, each to your own. So now for the inside, I don't want to try to hand paint that entire inside. And there's a lot of like uneven texture with this wood. So black is very hiding. You know that what light colors will show black will hide. So for the inside of these, I'm going to go ahead and spray them with some Rust-Oleum enamel paint just to give them that nice like freshened up color. And once the paint cures, it is food safe. I am going to seal it in with a top coat also because before I get a whole bunch of the questions, is this food safe? <laughs> if you want to put something open in there, you you can. I can like imagine like snackages and that are in packages just because there's really not a wonderful seal on these type of canister storage. And I do want, since these are wooden boxes, I thought they would be really cool with a primitive vibe. So I'm going to go with some of the Lantern Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. Hopefully I'll get a little bit of crackier chippiness. Who you never know. But I do know that I want to hide all the imperfections of this wood using a black paint. Now sometimes you can get away with one coat when it comes to a dark color like black, but because of the wood and it was so dry that it soaked in a lot of it that I need to go in and do a second coat. Sticking with that kind of primitive vibe, I ran across these labels that have crows on it. Definitely a primitive vibe there. <laughs> I love crows. I, that, there's just something about a black crow. So, but now on these ones, I to size them, it's a little bit different because they want to print off as like a four sheet, you know, like four on one paper, or you can get them when you're sizing them to like print off on one each individual. I have three different boxes. I need to kind of play around with the sizing because I can't just go in to this and like, okay, I need a three by five. That's not how it kind of works. Sometimes you just have to kind of work with and get a general sizing for each box to make them fit. I needed to get a bigger one for the biggest one, so I ended up twirling my paper <laughs> so that it was at a different way that it was going to print off so I could get, I wanted the coffee for the big one because I can kind of imagine somebody putting their coffee pods in that, which are sealed. <laughs> um, so I wanted that to be my biggest one. I did print off a couple different sizes only because I explained to you earlier that my computer's in my house and I'm in my studio working. That way I could kind of like, okay, this one fits, this one doesn't fit, this one's too small. 
And then even in like my Canon printer that I can like go in and like deselect, like I don't print that, don't print that. And then one of the times I was printing one out, I forgot to do that. So next thing you know, I've got six pages that I do not need. Oops, <laughs> that'll happen. But I just printed these out on copier paper. So in my mind, I was kind of like, okay, coffee, the biggest one, sugar, you could do sugar packets or you could do like a Ziploc of sugar or something like that. Um, and then I was thinking tea bags are a little bit on the smaller side. So the small, like, you know, I was like just myself, I didn't do flour because I thought that could go in your pantry. <laughs> it, you, you, we each think of things differently. That is for sure. So all I'm doing is cutting them out close, but I am going to actually decoupage them onto another piece of copier paper first only because if I just glued them on as is the image would get dark and I don't want that to happen so like just gluing them onto another copier sheet of paper gives it that nice light background that it needs. After I got them all cut out, glued on copier paper, glued on to the boxes, I let them dry. Now I'm going to go ahead and seal the entire box and including the paper itself with some Weather Defense Clear Coat. So my clear coat is now dry. I'm going to go ahead and start to reassemble these. Luckily enough that when I was painting, I didn't fill in my <laughs> screw hole so I know where everything lines up to. I wasn't sure if I wanted to distress the boxes to bring out the details or not, but I really think it needs that in-between color from the bottom with the lightness to the rusty, crusty hinges that are going on. I really think it would be a nice gradual flow up to that point. So just taking some sandpaper onto those edges that I sanded. Luckily, there's no paint going to be coming through because that's those edges that I rounded. And so that'll just bring that lightness in and it'll tie this all together. And after I get my edges all distressed, I'm just going to take the finest steel wool that there is, the double four zero, and then just make sure that everything is nice and smooth. Take that really glossy from the clear coat off, open that up because I'm going to go ahead and wax these with some black wax. That'll be another extra protected top coat. It'll blend everything all together.
So thank you again for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you are a thrift store, pre-loved, secondhand find junkie like I am, and this is your vibe, and you are not already part of our YouTube family, please smash that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And as always, give me a quick comment down below. Have I inspired you to look at secondhand finds in a new way? And which of the items that I made over today were your favorites? So again, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time, and you can see what we're up to. Bye. Bye.